It was a smooth ride through the mountains from Ifijase to Kumeru, where the Bonfubiri Wildlife Sanctuary is located. It is a sight to behold for first timers, the beautiful hills and variety of trees on that stretch. From oral history, the Bonfubiri Wildlife Sanctuary was a forest reserve established under the Ashanti Tradition Ordinance in 1946. It was set aside as forest reserve and it was later given out to um, two timber companies, AG and Bibiani Wooden uh, uh, Loggers Company. But after some time, they lost their concession and the place was given to wildlife uh, department then. But uh, it was gazetted before it was given to wildlife. So it was gazetted in 1975 uh, under LI. Uh, 1022. So since then, wildlife has been managing the area. The reserve came into being in the era of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, for its topography, plants, animals, and its associated ecological values. Due to these values, the Ghana Wildlife Society finally took over to protect the ecosystem of the Bonfibiri area. We have a lot of potentials in the area. Um, we have uh, um, uh, Kajarasi and uh, Pami Hills. We have a lot of animals. In fact, we have about 26 mammals. We have about 141 bear species. We have about five primates <clears throat> and then um, three crocodile species that are also around. After a briefing by the park manager of the reserve, the team got ready for the journey through the woods and mountains to enjoy nature. I'm told we have a waterfall in here which are different species of crocodiles and we will also climbing some mountains and hiking. So hey, follow me, let's go have fun. It was a daunting walk through the thicket. The pathway was stony from the beginning, hilly at a point and slippery too. A tour guide becomes crucial at this point. It was an eye opener to see different tree species which have been named to educate all who visit. One fascinating thing about Mufubiri Wildlife Sanctuary is the beautiful rock formation which gives the reserve a picturesque look. There are different shapes and designs which are all natural. This particular stone is in the form of a lion. It is called the lion stone. It's a natural thing made by Almighty God. Nothing has been added onto it. It's just natural how you see it. From here you see the true picture of how it is. But when you go on the other side, you just see it as a normal stone. My team and I walked through some caves on our adventure. Hiking through some fascinating crawling trees was a Herculean task. Traversing through the rocks, we made our way closer to our final destination. We got to an area where our tour guide cautioned us not to touch anything around us. You shouldn't touch. Hmm. I must confess, we shivered with fear, thinking we had entered a sacred place. But we guessed wrong. The caution was rather to avoid any weak tree and its branches from falling off to hurt us. This was undoubtedly relief and we kept our focus. After a short distance, we finally arrived at the most talked about waterfall in the Ashanti region, the Bonfubiri Waterfall. It has a little history and we have crocodiles in the pond, which doesn't make it swimmable. Okay, 
So this place has been a sacred place. You don't swim, you don't do anything here. You just come here for relaxation. Then you go, you continue your trip from here. The temperature here was cold with a serene atmosphere. Unfortunately, tourists are not allowed to swim in this waterfall, and the reason is simple. That particular waterfall is home to crocodiles. It is also a sacred place for the people of Kumeyi. Here is the story behind the Bonfubili waterfall. A very long time ago, we had um, our ancestors living at Agogo. They were serving a, a god called Kachidente. So one day, Kachidente wanted to know how his people are, whether they are lovable, whatever. So he turned himself into a mad person, moving from one place to the other. He even went to the palace. The palace denied him. They just sucked him away. So upon his quest, he went into a house. They received him. They gave him some food, water, and everything. And he revealed himself to them as the god that they are serving, as Kachidente, that he has seen how Hosa his people are. So he cannot be their god again. So he's going to destroy his people and then all the things in the kingdom. So he told the household to move away from the kingdom. And they did so. They listened to Kachidente and they moved. Immediately they moved. Um, Kachidente sent, you can talk of all kinds of flies. He sent them onto the people to destroy them. Most of them travel from that place to this place. We have caves over there. You know, those days our ancestors were not living in self contains and in these posh houses that we are having today. So they came to live in the caves over there. So unfortunately, unfortunately, all those people who came here, none of them survived. So when it um, Kumau, they celebrate a festival called Papa Festival. So during this Papa Festival, Nananom comes here to pour libation, to appease the gods, to seek for all, all sort of things for the community. Guns, sticks and machetes are the working aids for the tour guides we met during our tour. As was obvious, it was explained that the weapons are used for protection from wild animals in the forest. It was mandatory for each personnel to carry the guns any time they are on duty in the sanctuary. It took the team almost a three-hour walk through portions of the Bonfubiri Wildlife Sanctuary. Just when we thought the journey was over, we were directed to another waterfall, which was about an hour's walk to our destination. It was a rather difficult terrain, steep hilly climb and crossing rivers. At a point, I ended up staggering like a drunk, looking for something to hold on to be steady. We got to a place within the reserve where we needed to cross another river. Here, there was no bridge to cross to the other side. So our tour guide pulled a piece of wood to help us cross. After about 40 minutes of walking, we finally arrived at our second waterfall, known as the Wala Falls. Wala Falls paints a beautiful scene of Mother Nature. The running water, unlike the Bonfibiri waterfall, can be described as fast and furious. 
the two waterfalls don't flow all year round. This, according to Forestry Commission, slows down patronage at certain times of the year. It's been well patronized, but the challenge is that it is ephemeral. It doesn't flow throughout the year. So it will flow for some time and then you would not see it again. So sometimes you would invite, invite people to come over, but they would be disappointed when the water is not flowing. So I'm thinking that probably in future we need to um, dig some water in the reserve and supply it to the fall. We were told the animals go deeper into the forest due to the rains. However, tourists can see all the animal species in November and December. We have a lot of animals here, most especially buffalo. We have a lot of buffaloes here, uh, but a lot of people are not aware that we have all those. We have uh, different kinds of antelopes around. We have crocodiles. We have the Nile crocodile here, we have the long-snouted crocodile, we have the dwarf crocodile. All these animals are here for people to come and view. So I would advise that people should come and see what we have here. This location is ideal for hiking, mountain climbing, game viewing, bird watching, swimming and camping for tourists. But according to the park manager, Mr. Richard Asari, most of these places are undeveloped and needed some attention to make them decent. People are patronizing, but the challenge we have is that um, our potentials are underdeveloped. Most of our food bridges are broken down. In the future, we need people to, to support us, especially public-private partnership so that we can work together because we, we have a lot to do in the reserve. We need to develop the area to a standard where it will attract a lot of people from far and near. Mr. Richard Asari explained that tourists who visit the Bonfubiri Wildlife Sanctuary are charged a small fee. Um, the money is channeled to our corporate headquarters. So all the monies that are accrued here are sent to Accra office yes he mentioned some of the problems our main challenge here is poaching illegal hunting in the reserve and then full any herdsmen entering the reserve those are the main challenges we are confronted with now but we are doing our best uh, we used to have a lot of uh, bushfires but i think that one is under control now just like the Bonfuburi Wildlife Sanctuary, there are many tourist sites in the country which are not known. Most of these sites are in such a poor state that will not attract tourists. Currently in the law, uh, the LI 2393, which is the regulation on tourist sites and attractions, the district assembly is a major player, the traditional council is a major player, the Ghana Tourism Authority is a major player. And so we formed this tripartite uh, body that then now looks at, okay, this is a site. Who owns the land? Because land ownership is one. We know that in every community, it's either the traditional authority or a family that owns the land. But you working with the traditional authority, we're able to identify the land. The assembly, who can see tourism as part of their revenue generation activities are then brought in. Then we all work on a master plan and start developing. Through that arrangement, we have all the sites in the southern sector listed, their potential and all that. And then, then we go out and look for investors because we cannot do all. Government can even um, create a land bank. Land has been a major scarce resource in development in this tourism space. Now, government can partner you know, the traditional authority, the schools and schemes to acquire land, like the Marine Drive project, get similar ones in other destinations, say North, Damango, Wale Wale, say Axim. Government should partner the traditional authority. Then, when government travel on its investment tour, pitch, but get local partners to partner with these foreign 
investors so that they develop. Tour operators argue that Ghana has a lot to offer when it comes to domestic tourism and therefore encourage Ghanaians to patronize their own. There are a lot of things that has to be done as well because if we're talking about domestic tourism, it's a key to uh, growing uh, Ghana uh, tourism. So, so far we've done three and we've written reports to GTE and it has potential. If we do it and we encourage Ghanaians to travel, we we'll earn money. If uh, the inbound are not coming, we have to let Ghanaians know that they have to know their country first before moving outside. We, the private sector, we can't leave us out. When it comes to domestic tourism, to Peter Senior, we have signed an MOU with GTE running the bus and doing a media campaign. Tourism is um, a social economic activity that moves people. Now, before people will get to know of a particular destination, there must be some awareness. An awareness of an experience that you get if you visit that particular destination. There are a lot of sites, there are a lot of attractions, there are a lot of activities we have in this country from the flora and the fauna, I mean, our beaches, our water bodies, and um, even some nature attractions, including man-made and heritage sites. Tourism is a competitive socio-economic activity, and every tourism product is as competitive as any product on the market. And that is why, whilst people are selling foreign destinations like Dubai, there are domestic tour operators who are also packaging products. Now, for us as domestic tour operators or travel trade I mean, tour professionals, what we do is that we sell an experience. We don't sell just the attraction. But tourism is not just the sites and attractions. The experience is the interaction with nature, the interaction with our culture. And so we encourage everybody uh, that let's get involved, let's move around the country, let's spread wealth, let's spread love, let's spread the network that we have. And then beyond that, we will make sure that going by the dictates of the law, the ally that we have, uh, all these sites over time will get to the minimum standards that we are requiring. Uh, LI 2393 is legislative instrument or regulations on tourist sites and attractions. As we all know, over the years, our tourist sites and attractions have been unregulated. 2020 was COVID, and so we've not been able to register and license a lot of these facilities. But this year, we are going out aggressively, and we know that we will make sure that every tourist site worth its salt will have the basic requirements. And we are going to also work with institutions like the Ghana Investment Promotion Center to make sure that investments are brought into the sector for the growth of our tourism. The tour operators are pushing for tourist sites in the country to be insured for the safety of all. When we are taking people on tour, is number one, uh, we ensure we, we have the insurance in case and it's nature, anything could happen which we don't have a control, okay. But taking, for example, the crocodiles, and we went to uh, Volta region, we went there, so we were communicating very well with them. That uh, they even drew a line when we wanted to see them. There's one they drew that you don't have to cross that line. And the man, they explained what happened the other time, why the crocodile had to chew that person. So, so it's nature, but we make sure we communicate very well. We have insurance on board in case anything happens, but the people at the site will communicate well with them that there are certain things that they have a control, they make sure they put in place, unless they don't have a control. But once they have a control, we make sure that they put in place that our people are safe. For insurance, I think we have to make it mandatory. You see, when you want to travel abroad, there's a, a, a mandatory requirement that you have to buy insurance. So we need to understand and appreciate that even if we have not made it alone. Now for me and my company, Kaya Tours, we have insurance. We have public liability insurance that covers all the tourism products that we sell. Even though we've not made it law, I have made a, a policy in my business. So in case anything happens to the tourists, the tourist is protected.
That's why we need to have a broader stakeholder consultation to have such discussion and parliament should also engage the ministry should engage the private sector practitioners who are professionals in the sector so that we can share all these ideas because if i'm a tourist and i know that i'm going to this destination and if anything happens to me there's a liability on the part of the host because i'm insured and i'll be protected why won't i come there it becomes even a marketing competitive advantage when you are selling your destination you tell people that all our tour sites are insured yes there is a part of the law the requirement is that these sites must be insured uh, there are two levels of insurance there's a public liability and then also insuring the facility itself uh, and we encourage operators to do both because you may have a facility uh, in most of these areas they are in the bush area and bush fires and all that uh, we've seen uh, incidents of bush fires wreaking, uh, wreaking havoc on uh, some tourist sites. And so we encourage tourist uh, uh, operators to take the insurance. Ghana's tourism until the coronavirus broke out had been projected to rise significantly following the huge success of the year of return initiatives. Figures from the 2019 tourism report by the Ghana Tourism Authority show that the country earned about $3.312 billion in tourism receipts. I would advise everybody whether far or near, to come and see what we have here. Uh, I wish people would come here to see things for themselves. We have beautiful terrain, mountains, two waterfalls, birds, animals. You could go for uh, animal viewing. To make the place attractive, I think, for example, when uh, tourists or Ghanaians visit the place, we can have like cultural trip welcoming people so even when you get the uh, the welcoming mood you feel welcome and that would lead you to the place before the tour guide comes in in restarting tourism you need to come up with some innovative you know packages that will attract and delight people uh, for instance we do face painting and um, we do some surprises, you know, hidden treasure that we've put something somewhere here, search for it. So 